How is it going, everybody? Today, I'm very excited to announce my guest. He's a Ball State wide receiver, a 2021 NFL draft prospect, and a native of St. John, Indiana. Antoine Davis, how are we doing today, brother? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. Happy to have you on the show today. Um, first and foremost, we got to represent that hometown. So tell us about your hometown and what makes it so special. Uh, definitely. St. John is pretty unique. You know, not many people know where it's at, but if you're describing it, it's described as part of the region or for uh, people who aren't around and local to Indiana, you could just say Chicago because downtown Chicago is about like 40, 45 minutes from there. So it's in like a perfect location. It's a like more suburb upbeat type of place. It's not really the country. A lot of people think Indiana is a country, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That sounds like a pretty chill place, though. You know, it's not too far from Chicago, kind of doing your own thing. You don't have to worry about the city too much. It sounds pretty chill. It sounds pretty chill. To yeah, me. definitely. <laughs> so you were a two-time All-State selection in high school. You wound up playing a year at Lincoln University before finally getting to Ball State. Kind of what was that whole experience like? Uh, that experience was uh, really well. Like I said, um, I didn't have any offers and my friend KJ Singleton, who played with me in high school, he was committed there. And I said, hey, can you show the coach uh, my tape when you go down? They liked it. They offered me. Um, I got in there and immediately made an impact in fall camp. And the coaches liked me. Um, I didn't ended up. I didn't start, but I ended up uh, rotating in and started late towards the end of the year. But in that year, uh, I was the leading receiver. I actually broke a record for most receiving yards in a game that still stands to this day. And I was All-American there. So I think it was a great experience. Uh, nice place to get my feet wet and uh, kind of understand the way college football works. Uh, although it was D2, it's still college football. So definitely. Yeah, for sure, man. Football is football, man. And even more so nowadays, like it's just, it's so competitive at every level. So it doesn't even matter. You're seeing dudes in D2, D3 get drafted to the league all the time these days. So, Hey man, you balled out, you did your thing and look where you're at now. So you finally got to ball state, you started balling out and then a broken foot ended your 2018 season. Um, so how difficult was that adversity kind of like, how'd you deal with that? Like kind of what was your mindset and how'd you deal with it? Uh, yeah, when I first, when it first happened, I was highly upset because I've never been injured to the point where I'm going to miss a whole season, let alone any game. So I was kind of frustrated going into surgery and basically a couple of days after surgery, I just got really in tune with my, uh, faith and just really started praying and reading up and I just stuck to the script because everything happens for a reason so I just continued to stay positive and had my uh, family and friends supporting me and my coaches and teammates as well uh, and, if, and now that you look at it right now it's a blessing because I got the clock extension which allowed me to play this season and we ended up winning the MAC championship in the first bowl game in school history so everything happens for a reason so I'm glad that happened though. Yes sir so kind of what's it like after you 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 take a severe injury like that like you break your foot like that's a pretty big injury especially for a receiver so kind of what's it like when you step back on the field the, for the first time after you know suffering an injury like that yeah the first time on the field I was out of shape because <laughs> because I couldn't <laughs> run so uh with our trainer Sean Comer he had to get me in shape and uh get me ready to go and uh I think the rehab I did with him was great and it got me back actually a little faster than expected. So uh, actually the first type of like receiver cutting type of stuff, it actually didn't bother me. I was kind of timid at first just to put all the pressure on and like be able to get out my cuts as fast as possible. But I just kept practicing and practicing and I finally got comfortable within a week uh, to be able to go out there and uh, dominate in spring ball and be able to come back like I never got injured before. That's what's up. Um... So, you know, you wrapped up your college career, 95 catches, 1,100 yards, four tutties. When did you begin to realize that you could, you know, kind of translate your game to the NFL level? Uh, definitely, I would say, I mean, coming out of Lincoln, I kind of like when I that first year at Lincoln, I just realized like I had the potential to go. It's always been my dream to go to the NFL. So that's really just been since day one. I just always knew it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of elevating in your game to get to that point. So every year I just always wanted to beat myself. And I think a thing that separates me and help will help me in this process is I never get satisfied with what I've accomplished. Like whatever I did today, I want to beat tomorrow. I always want to beat my yesterday self. So I think that's a thing that would help helps translate to the next level. Yeah. So you mentioned that this past season, you were able to win a championship and you were able to, you know, win the first bowl game in school history. Kind of what was that moment like? It was surreal because when I first got here, first eligible year, I was allowed to play 2017 because I had to sit out for the red shirt. Um, we went two and 10. We were losing 
like 50 plus to like zero. There were so many games where we didn't score and it was just, it was a bad season. And the following season I did break my foot and didn't play, but obviously I followed and we won a little, like a couple more games, but we still weren't there. Then the 2019 season, when I came back my first year after my injury, we were like three games um, from going or like going to a bowl game and uh, potentially the MAC championship game. Uh, we lost three games by like combined eight points. And it was like, dang, what's the problem? And then this year was amazing because everything finally clicked. Uh, we lost our first one against Miami, but our uh, safety, Bryce Cosby, he had the seniors in a group message and he just said uh, like Detroit or bust, we're still in it. This uh, do what you need to do, get your mind off of it and let's prepare for the next week. And as you can see, if you look back on the games, we just got better and better each game. We were able to close more. And then towards the end of the season, we like really clicked and we were just able to dominate every single opponent we had. That's what's up that, that, you know, you guys just kind of took initiative and just, you know, just took it upon yourselves. Usually it's the coaches that got to fire you up, but you guys just kind of fired yourselves up, which is, that's what's up. That's that's what you like to see from a team. And that's a, that's a lot of what's going to be like in the NFL too, from all the dudes I've talked to, like, that's exactly what it's like. So, I mean, I hope you enjoyed it, man, because <laughs> it's, it's, it's dope, bro. It's dope. Yeah, it is. So what is the best attribute you'd bring, like personally that you would have to say that you would bring to an NFL roster? I would say being able to get open and catch the ball consistently with, I think I have a very good catch radius and I can run a full route tree. And at the end of the day, it's really about getting open and separating. And I think that's what you need to do at the next level. And um, being a receiver, just like guys like um, Keenan Allen, somebody you may think that, Oh, he didn't run a blazing 40. Well, football speed and 40 speed is a whole different thing. And the way he knows how to do releases and find open spots in the zones and be able to get past defenders. That's what it really takes to bring uh, your game to the next level as a receiver. And that's what I think um, my best attributes are and something I want to continue to grow on and be able to get to a level like uh, Keenan Allen, Stephon Diggs, Devonta Adams, those guys like that. Yeah, the 40-yard dash is severely overrated, and I, I've been saying it for years. I don't understand why they put so much emphasis on the 40-yard dash. I mean, I guess I understand the premise, but I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me. I, I look like what you were saying. I look at the route tree in terms of receiving talent. I don't look at how fast you are. you got to be able to catch the ball. and you know. No, that's what, they said Jerry Rice ran a 4-7, but I, I watched some of his film, and – He's out. He's out running, guys. Like yeah, exactly, exactly. How would you best describe your leadership qualities? I know some of your teammates have described you as a leader. How would you describe your leadership qualities? Are you like the super rah rah guy? Are you like the silent, like silent but deadly approach? Kind of just describe yours for me. Uh, my approach to leadership is uh, most similar to a silent but deadly. I like to lead by example because I feel like if you're doing all the talking and you can't walk the walk, then that really doesn't mean anything. So. I like to show guys, especially uh, like the younger guys in our program, they were able to see that I'm just a workhorse. Like I'm, no one's going to outwork me. I'm going to do the extra stuff. I'm going to stay in the film room later, get some extra weightlifting stuff done, be on the field until it's dark. Uh, but when it gets time to talk and I need to, and I feel like I need to talk, that's something, that's when I'll be able to be more vocal. But I would definitely say I lead by example and I could, I talk when I need to, and I make a real clear statement. And I think a lot of guys respect that and, are able to latch onto my message because when I do speak, it's, it's real. And it gets some hype. Yeah, for sure. So we have a lot of high schoolers and young athletes who listen to my podcast. So kind of explain to them, what is life like at the next level? Like, how do you like be real? Like, how do you like balance your classes along with football and stuff like that? How do you, how do you do that? Like, what's your best advice for, for them for that? I would say stay focused. I feel like I've always had this dream and this like burning passion for this in my in my heart my whole life. So I've always just kept tunnel vision. Um, I would say make sure you have your priorities straight. You can have fun, but when it's time to go, like in the season, it's time to go. You need to make sure you get your schoolwork done because if you don't have your schoolwork done, you're not going to be eligible. And then when you're starting off in the program, you need to learn the playbook as fast as possible because that's the fastest way to get on the field. So you definitely need to keep your priorities straight. And if you're wanting to go to college to play sports or like football, for example, like this, you definitely need to put football before anything else but school goes before football but it's like a mixture of the two like it's school football combined and then then it's your activities if you have free time then you can go out but especially in the season um missing a party or two is not going to define you because 
uh, just like we did this year. Like we were really focused, especially with all the crazy COVID protocols. We didn't want to lose anybody. So uh, we were really strict the entire season on everybody and just really only stuck around each other. So I just feel like you just got to prioritize what's really important in life because like I said, when we celebrated after the MAC championship, that would be any other celebration after any other game or after any camp thing. So definitely just stay focused and know your priorities and always keep God first because he'll lead you to the path. For sure. That's some great advice right there. Um, which NFL players, I know you mentioned a few earlier and Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, guys like that, but what players do you watch film on that you try to take bits and pieces from to model your play style after? I would definitely say Stephon Diggs, Keenan Allen, Devontae Adams, and uh, more old school, I like Steve Smith's film because I think he's he ain't going to get bullied. He may be 5'9", but he's playing play like he's 6'3". So those are guys I definitely like to look at uh, and study their film just because those guys are uh, the top premier receivers in the league. And I just like how a lot of them carry carry themselves. You never hear about them get, getting in trouble. Um, you always see the, uh, them something on social media, just being nice, giving back. So not only do I model my game after them, I think it's a good role model to look uh, as them as a person because that's what you, you always want to look for. You can't just have a role model that's good on the football field, but being a being a dick uh, outside of it. So definitely those guys, I think they bring like the most of the table on the field. And uh, as a receiver, what, what I would want to model my game after and how I would want to handle myself as a person uh, being in the league. Did you ever have a welcome to college football moment? So like when you stepped on the field, did you ever get like hit really hard or maybe something along the lines of that where you're like, all right, I'm playing college football now at a high level. What was your like welcome to college football moment? I would say it was, it's less in the game, but more in the conditioning because at Lincoln, our conditioning test was really tough and I almost fainted and passed out. But going to Ball State, we had to run uh, 16, 110-yard uh, sprints. And skill had, um, I think it was like 15 seconds with maybe like a 45-second break. And I thought I was in shape, but it was really tough on my legs because it's just 110 yards is a long, a long way to run. But I passed it every time. But after that, I was gassed, and I just wanted to lay down. So that's <laughs> really the welcome to college football part. Dang, that's, that's crazy, bro. 16 of them? yes that's nuts. i was yes <laughs> <laughs> that's nuts all right so what is your favorite route to run and why i would say my favorite route to run is probably like uh a, 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 we called it a search route but i basically had the option to if it's a single high i can keep it on as a go if it's uh too high i can turn it into a post or basically i have the option just to win so an example of that route was the Eastern Michigan when it was third and 19 and we were tied up with like a minute left to go. Uh, we called that search play on and I knew they were in man coverage. So I was able to get to his toes at about 12, stick it to the post about 15 and then basically run like a post comeback out of it. And basically uh, our quarterback would just hold on to the ball until I had uh, the separation and open space. So I definitely think that was my favorite route to run just because it showed the trust the coaches and quarterback had in me to be able to read a whole defense while the, we're running full speed and being able to get to the spot where I needed to be at in time for Drew to make the pass. Yeah. So as, as a receiver, do you like it more when a cornerback plays like right on you at the line of scrimmage or do you prefer it when they play off of you? I prefer it either way, but I like, I like man coverage just cause it's more of a, more of a challenge, you know, zone depends on who you're playing against but you can you can pick apart zone depending on how they play it but man especially going against like top guys like I like it in practice we played a lot of man so going uh, against guys like Antonio Phillips uh AJ had him on the show earlier yeah (laughs) yeah so when people ask me oh who's the best corner you played against it's definitely Antonio and AJ those two pushed me and got me better and they were always in man coverage all up in my face we had battles going back and forth and that those two guys, uh, especially Antonio, him being there longer, definitely pushed me and uh, molded me into the receiver I am today and definitely made it easier going against uh, corners uh, and, uh, and our, as our opponents. So definitely that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what have you been doing personally to kind of prepare for your transition from college football to the NFL? Uh, one way, obviously, is the, the change in the football. So 
I personally like the NFL ball better. I feel like it's way easier to catch. It's just a way smoother feel. The college ball is really narrow and pointy. And if you catch it the wrong way, it actually hurts. So definitely practicing uh, with that. Um, I actually, during my time training for my pro day, um, I was gotten in uh, touch with Krishan Hogan. He went to Marion University uh, He's in Indianapolis. He's a good friend of mine too. Oh yeah, yeah. So definitely, yeah. Uh, my uh, high school quarterback was his quarterback, so he got us in touch, and uh, he took me under his wing, and he was just showing me different type of routes and stuff, the NFL runs, things I should work on, and uh, I think we really got close and uh, are really good friends now. So he was just showing me the ropes. Uh, one day he took me to his uh, training facility, and we put on like these strobe go- uh, goggles, and it was like insane. I got to like level like five, but the way it, it was insane, like this, I like a blink, and the ball would be right there. So definitely just getting my hands right uh just getting my body right um I drew, I was like 211 in January and I weighed in uh pro day at 206 so just staying in that between 200 206 type of body frame just so I can still have muscle and be able to take hits across the middle but still be lean and agile to uh obviously get open and stuff like that yeah yeah I've been in touch with Creshawn Hogan for for a while he was actually one of my very first podcast guests so uh, yeah, he's a he's a great dude. He's a great dude to learn from too. Um, and he's been he's been in the league for for a few years, coming out of Marion, which is really impressive in his own right as well. So shout out to Creshawn. <laughs> um, who is, in your opinion, the best player you've ever played with and against? Like you could take it back to high school if you want any anything. Yeah, this is a hard one. <laughs> Ooh. Right. As if I'm going to say, say, is it going to be offense or defense? Yeah. Best play you played with and against. So your teammate, it can be offense or defense against probably defense for you, or maybe even offense. Who knows? Shoot. I would say offensively, I would probably say Justin Hall, my teammate. Uh, he's definitely different. He's a, he's a real cool guy. And I just feel like he does a lot of things on the field that people may be like, Whoa, how do you do that? So, I definitely think he has like a lot of freakish athleticism that I played against. Um, I would, I would say if I'm going to say an opponent, I would say uh, D Estridge from Western Michigan, that dude's speed is like on another type of level. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. For defense, I would say the best defender I probably went against was Antonio. And besides that um, I did go against Darius Phillips of Western Michigan. I think he may be on the Bengals still, but he definitely was, a real patient corner with like freakish speed. So it was uh, a challenge to go against him, uh, but it definitely made me better. Yeah, for sure. That's always the best too, is whenever you go against dudes who are in the league and then you have film on them and you're just like, yeah, here's what I did against this dude. You know what I mean? So that's always good. It's always good to just make yourself better against the best talent out there. Um, so one last question for you, Antoine, what kind of advice can you give to the young athletes out there chasing their NFL dreams? I would definitely say keep God first because without him, you wouldn't be here. And he's obviously making the path um, thing. I would say I like to write out my goals and everything. And I, w- I read them as well as praying every day. And I think that's just helped me like stay focused. And it's actually amazing to see like on your list at like maybe the end of the year, how many things you can check off that ac- you actually like manifested and got blessed with. Um, so I definitely say that. And then I would definitely just say, keep your eyes like on the prize, stay focused with tunnel vision and know what you want to do. Like you're obviously trying to play the next level college football for a reason to get to the NFL. So in order to do that, you need to take care of business in the classroom so you can actually perform on the field and you need to learn the playbook as fast as you can. Um, this is for goes for receivers. Uh, the way, the best way to get yourself on the field as a receiver is learn every single receiver position. So that's what I did as soon as I was able to be eligible and get the playbook learning X, Y, Z, F, all that. I would say definitely get in that playbook. Uh, get with your coaches as much as possible because they're going to give you feedback and uh, definitely get with the quarterbacks. Uh, I, I would throw with, like every single quarterback on like the depth. Like I don't care who it is. Like I want to get better and I want to build a connection. So just be a respectable person. Uh, get your stuff done and just stay focused. Yeah, for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, Antoine Davis, thank you so much for hopping on the show today. Please go ahead and tell everyone where they can find you on social media. Uh, my Instagram and Twitter is underscore Antoine Davis, A-N-T-W-A-N Davis. 
All right. Thank you so much for hopping on the show today. 2021 NFL draft prospect, Ball State receiver. Thank you so much for hopping on the show today, Antoine. We're going to be super tuned in to your journey and we're super excited for you. So thank you once again for hopping on. Thank you. I appreciate you for having me. Yes, sir.